Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now one of the easiest ways to build a gaming PC is to buy an old workstation like this one and add a graphics card of your choice. Sometimes that choice can be limited, especially if for example the power supply is proprietary and doesn't always feature the extra connectors you need. That's why it's always important to do your research if you are considering something like this. This HP Z420 was a bit of a beast back in its day. I won this one for £133 in an eBay auction, though once I sold the Quadro graphics card inside of it, my total expense expenditure was at just over 100. I'm pretty pleased with this, especially as we have a 6-core Xeon E5 1650v2, a huge 64 gigs of 1866 MHz DDR3 in quad channel, and a 1TB 10K hard drive. I especially like HP's interesting all-in-one liquid cooler that sits atop the CPU. This is such a cool piece of design, the radiator is stuck right to the back of the fan. We'll see how effective it is later. There's also a speaker built into this machine, which is great if you haven't got monitor speakers, though the quality is, well, it's how you can imagine it would sound. Now, I'd always recommend adding a cheap SSD these days, even if it's just for the OS, because it will massively improve boot and loading times, so bear that in mind. A traditional hard drive is fine, but an SSD seems like more of a must in 2023, especially considering that they are very inexpensive. Remember what I said about limitations at the start? Well, despite the beefy 600 watt PSU, we've only got one 6-pin graphics card connector. It's not the end of the world, as from what I understand, you can buy 18 to 24-pin converter cables specifically for this PC, and then proceed to swap out the PSU for something with as many connectors as you desire. I'm not sure how well a new PSU will fit in here physically, but that's a video for another day. Today this system is fine as is because we're working to a lesser budget and with that in mind, here's what I've gone with. This is a lower spec yet still capable option. The Gigabyte 1650OC edition is the later and slightly better GDDR6 card, which offers faster performance than its GDDR5 counterpart. Some of these cards have no power connectors, and some, like this model, have a single 6-pin requirement. Although it has just 4 gigs of memory, it is still pretty capable these days, and will work just fine inside this HP. As you'll see from the following results, the processor can be the limiting factor in certain titles, because despite Despite its 6 cores and 12 threads, it is almost 10 years old. It's weaker than a first gen Ryzen 5 1600 for example, and as far as rendering video goes, it'll be outpaced by a modern Core i3 from Intel. We'll have to see if we can upgrade this at some point and what sort of performance gains we get. It is by no means bad though, and in combination with the fast 64 gigs of DDR3, it is still suitable for CPU intensive tasks and of course gaming. Thanks to the liquid cooler, the Xeon stays very cool under load, and as we get into our first game, Apex Legends, we get a good idea of how capable a setup like this still is. In Apex Legends at 1080p, I've gone with the high textures and TSAA while setting everything else to its lowest. I've done this because this combines a nice mixture of graphical quality with performance, and on average we hit 116 FPS with some pretty solid 1 and 0.1% lows. I always like to try and keep that 1% low above 60 if I'm targeting a high average frame rate, especially in these multiplayer competitive titles, as it means that we will retain an overall consistency to the game that's important when you're trying to wipe out enemy players. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, I'm having real fun with this one. I actually prefer it to Warzone 2, but of course that's a personal preference. I'm not sure how differently these games will perform, but if you want me to add Warzone 2 as well as this one into the benchmarks, just let me know. Now at 1080p with the basic preset and normal textures, with SMAA T2X set to high quality, we were hitting over 60 FPS, in fact over 70 FPS here. Now, the 1 and 0.1% lows were okay, I did notice a couple of little dips and drops. These were mainly at the start of the games I tested, but overall this is going to be a very solid experience and you won't need to implement any sort of FSR or 
upscaling methods here. Unless of course you want to opt for an even higher frame rate, in which case I'd recommend turning everything down to the minimum settings. Cyberpunk 2077 was of course the one that was going to push our CPU to the limit all along. This is where the age of the processor is really shown because in those busier crowded areas we will get some pretty hefty FPS dips. Now overall the average frame rate came back at over 60 with FSR 2.1 and performance enabled and the game does still look pretty good. It doesn't look too different from native because FSR 2.1 really is quite impressive. There's nothing we can really do about the stutters and inconsistencies though because of the age of the processor but I wouldn't build a PC like this and then expect top tier performance anyway so I think for what we've got this is acceptable. Now in Fortnite with the epic view distance, high textures and everything else at its lowest, sort of competitive settings I guess you could say, we actually retain pretty solid average and 1% lows. We saw 29 as the 0.1% low which is a given, there is the occasional stutter in Fortnite which seems to happen no matter the quality I choose, but I think here this was a pretty solid result. I'd always recommend implementing epic view distance just so you can see as far as possible you can see other enemy players you can see other structures stuff like that it is entirely up to you of course everything else remains at the lowest settings Fortnite can look really nice when everything is turned up but in the interest of performance here with this setup I think this was just about right we could of course turn the texture quality down a little bit for a slight bump in that average Forza Horizon 5 is very well optimised and in usual fashion performed really well with over 80 FPS at the high preset. The frame rate held steady even when we started to drive through those busier towns and when entering multi-competitor races too. The 1% and 0.1% lows were very solid and are reflective of the overall experience. I played this one for about half an hour and experienced no issues. Other 4 gig cards, modern ones, say the 6400 and 6500 XT due to their lower bandwidth will actually sort of start to show problems with anything higher than the low preset but the old 1650 here really holds up quite well despite what some may think is a VRAM limitation in 2023. GTA 5, an older game, obviously no problems here, high settings across the board, MSAA was set to 2x here, solid figures in terms of the average 1% low and 0.1% low, so it really is a good experience with this test setup, and as you can see the CPU still remaining nice and cool, and the fan isn't getting very loud at all on both the CPU and the graphics card. In Red Dead Redemption 2 with the console quality settings, these are the settings I always like to opt for. This makes the game look similar to how it does on the Xbox Series X or the PS4 or PS5. We actually hit 57 FPS here, so not quite 60 frames per second of course, but the game felt very smooth indeed with solid 1 and 0.1% low figures. The processor did exhibit some higher usage in and around town areas, which is to be expected because it is older, the cores are weaker, but it still held up fairly well. But all in all, this was pretty decent effort from this system in Red Dead. Finally then we have Spider-Man or Marvel Spider-Man Remastered, 1080p with FSR performance mode yet again with the low preset. This also uses FSR 2.1 so it still looks really nice and quite close to native. 69 was the average, nice with decent 1 and 0.1% lows as well. This was actually with the low preset, of course you could turn things up to medium and still implement FSR but this gave us a nice balance between visual quality and performance I feel because even at the lower settings Spider-Man still looks pretty good. Overall the old HP Z420 workstation possibly has potential for further upgrades but as it is you find one of these with an old E5 1650v2 CPU slapping a 1650 and you've got yourself a pretty decent gaming PC for not very much money, especially if like this one, it comes with 64 gigs of RAM. Remember though that an SSD will certainly help out a machine like this in 2023, and even if you have to buy a used one, I'd recommend buying one if it's just for the operating system alone. Thank you very much for watching then, I apologise if you can hear my dog's feet in the background. He's running about at the moment, I think there's a few squirrels in the garden, so... Yeah, can't help that, I'm afraid. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.